If you're into weird art like me, you've probably come across movies, books, fashion shows, music, sculpture, architecture, and video games that just don't really make sense. Usually when people encounter confusing art, they label it avant-garde. I literally consume art for a living, and I have a particular affection for anything that falls into this category. Specifically, I'm a fashion critic, and after taking in thousands of hours of avant-garde art, I've started to ask the same question that high school athletes and tired parents just ask right away. Why is this so weird? Not that I don't like the weird, but like, what is the actual point? I mean, avant-garde has been around for about 170 years, dating back to the great-grandfather of all weird art, Moby Dick, which, by the way, if you haven't read Moby Dick, it is ferociously, brilliantly weird. Like, it is so strange that the person that assigned you to read it in high school probably hasn't finished the book themselves. But yeah, I mean, what is the point? I mean, in the case of Moby Dick, it's so hard to actually read the book itself that you do feel kind of accomplished when you finish it. But I mean, to endure a racer head, all you have to do is just sit there and watch it for 89 minutes. And all you have to do to complete an Animal Collective song is not hit pause for four minutes. So... I mean, what is the point of this extremely experimental side of art? And by the way, I do need to hear your thoughts about this. Uh, if, if you're new here, my name is Bliss. I cover runway shows and kind of uncover the references, meaning, and artfulness of designer clothes. But today we're going to talk about something that's a lot more broad, and I, I really do need some good discussion happening around this, because we're definitely not going to find any answers to this if I'm just sitting here talking to myself in a room. Please comment, share your thoughts, and then comment on other people's comments. Let's really get into it together. I think that cynics of the avant-garde would say something like this. This shit is so dumb. You don't actually like any of these weird movies. They just make you feel smart. And you only get to celebrate when you find a very weird movie that somehow manages to be good by strategically balancing being a normal movie with other stuff that's just weird for weird's sake. It's like you're digging around in a pile of trash until you find something useful. You had to work so hard digging that you feel like you've accomplished a goal when you actually find something that isn't garbage. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I know everything about avant-garde, but I do have a really specific idea that I want to present to you. I did a video about the avant-garde in fashion about 18 months ago, and that's definitely worth checking out. You don't need that as setup for this video. You can just watch this one all the way through by itself. So, hey, if I've already lost you, come back in with me. Come on. This is, this is the point of the video right here. I think that sometimes avant-garde art is meant to serve as an encyclopedia for future artists. Anyone who's taken an undergraduate art theory class is like already getting ready to destroy me in the comments, but I'm going to be brave and continue anyway. We're also going to intersperse a lot of runway shows into this because again, that is my job. The avant-garde, outside of being a typology for weird in all of the arts, has a purpose beyond just pushing boundaries, which of course it does very well. If you've spent any time searching for craziest ever fashion or most insane runway show on Google, you may have run into the work of Yoji Yamamoto, the work of Rei Kawakubo, the work of Martin Margiela, and that's just to name a few. And we all think that those designers are great, at least fashion people generally do. Usually these people are held in such high regard that almost no one criticizes them ever. Okay, okay, but for all of that, to the average John or Jane, avant-garde reminds them of edgy teens in basements, just work that makes a mockery of traditional aesthetics. The majority of the world views the avant-garde as meaningless chaos, the old trick of muddying the waters so they appear deeper than they actually are. And not to be overly simplistic, but when most people encounter stuff that they don't instantly understand, they just sort of dismiss it as pointless. And if you've been in a high school art history class, you know that avant-garde just means experimenting with a form of art and trying to push the limits of what that art is capable of. But I am here today to ask the question, what if, for some artists, some designers, some artists, avant-garde is something that serves a different purpose? We're gonna walk through a really crazy example to illustrate this. And surprise, surprise, it's not gonna be fashion. Have you ever heard of a movie called The Holy Mountain? When you watch it, and I highly recommend that you do, it will be very difficult for you not to laugh at certain times and to be disturbed at other times. Now, fair warning, The Holy Mountain has a lot of actually pretty heavy and disturbing stuff in it, and it has a lot of really outdated, harmful stereotypes. The movie was made in the 70s. Not to mention the fact that just off-rip, this movie in many cases looks just 
goofy as fuck. In its own right, it has themes and meaning that is important to the telling of its own story, but the visual ways in which some of the movie's many themes are communicated are... Uh, hey, uh, when we're editing this, can we just throw in that scene of the naked guy screaming and thrashing around while he's surrounded by dummies of himself that are also naked? I think that'll illustrate our point really well here. Thank you. As I learned more about this movie, I learned how many artists it's influenced in so many different mediums. And like, despite the fact that it's kind of hard to appreciate this movie while you're watching it, unless you're just naturally into really wild shit, it is absolutely dominant in the number of things it's influenced. And as I often say on this channel, the only objective measure of quality for an artist is their influence. But d despite the Holy Mountain's overarching themes and its, its story that it does have, I, I think what it's trying to do is pack an entire film's worth of time with experiments, where each scene, if viewed individually, could be seen as its own little trial run of an idea. So here it is, here's my point. The Holy Mountain and other works of art that strike average people as just being too avant-garde, pointlessly obtuse, annoyingly different, they're often able to serve as some sort of inspirational encyclopedia. It's a point of reference for other artists. Let's think about that for a second. If we want to call this understanding of avant-garde some sort of language, then it's a designer's way of communicating hallmarks of what could maybe spread as little words or phrases from their language that become part of other artists' language down the road. And they do that by putting it all on the table, holding nothing back. And when all of those sometimes scattered ideas get reinterpreted by another designer, it could be like how real language does this, how languages will borrow and grow from each other. And if this example holds, the avant-garde is, however successful or not each piece is on its own, bursting with a bunch of unique and unconventional words, a bunch of the craziest words possible. And I feel like for some of the more disjointed or least understood avant-garde pieces, they might not be understood necessarily for their own merit, but for their contribution to the work of others. Just that the artist's mind is so chock full of ideas that they just need to get them all out in some way, and it just becomes avant-garde because of its own busyness. Maybe in lieu of new ideas combined with cohesion placed into a convincing and believable world, reflecting the zeitgeist and contributing to the nature of design itself, the avant-garde may be creating itself to enable others to take some of its components individually all the way to their respective ends. And maybe that's the goal, or, or at least that's how it ends up playing out in the real world. An almost encyclopedic guide entirely made for the inspiration of others to become the hero images and the largest motifs on thousands of mood boards in the future. Again, I'm a fashion critic, so my perspective on this is always going to naturally click back into clothes, but we have a particular designer who has been doing this for decades. Oh, it's a woman named Rei Kawakubo who designs for a brand called Comme de Garçon. If you're not absolutely obsessed with fashion, you probably know Comme de Garçon for making heart shoe. Um, just go ahead and get that out of your mind completely. That is like 1% of what this brand does. The real Comme de Garçon, what's called their main line, is clothes that appear to barely be clothes at all. And before anyone starts in on the who would wear this type of talk, the answer is that these collections have fervent collectors who wear the clothes regularly. They are uh, not hurting for cash, if that even matters. Much like the Holy Mountain, these ideas often feel disconnected on the runway, and they look like they aren't going anywhere in particular. I've spent years personally trying to understand what Rei Kawakubo's intentions were and are for these collections, but I don't think that matters today. The reality is that every year, thousands of kids graduate from fashion schools and begin to join the industry. Those kids are often fueled by these chaotic triumphs of design. And every once in a while, one person will think about that one piece from the Fall 2012 collection. It'll stick in their brain for years. And then, one day, sitting in their own studio, they'll have an idea that can take Ray's idea and bring it home to its conclusion. I don't know if this is what Ray Kawakubo intended, but I think that's what happens. 
I would never try to assert something crazy like, this is the reason that avant-garde exists. But this is definitely a use case that I've noticed. Again, I need to hear what everyone thinks about this. This is not gonna end up being a successful video if we don't have some good discussion down in the comments. So if you have any thoughts about this, any thoughts at all, I, I really do want to hear them. I, I read absolutely every single comment that comes through on this channel. And if you love talking about this stuff, if you wish you had more people in your life that wanted to have thought-provoking conversations about fashion specifically, I have a private Discord that is absolutely bursting with good conversations like this all the time. You also get access to exclusive episodes, extended episodes, you get to watch back old live streams, but the, the real like thing that I think people join the Patreon for is uh, that incredible discussion that's on the Discord. I'm uh, literally about to go check it again right now. I'm, I'm on it all day long. I love you all so much. Goodbye.